day that day is coming. And I, I believe there's a body of believers here in this house Amen. that God is calling to be a part of that remnant that he's going to raise up. But that comes with a cost. It comes with a cost. God just, he just doesn't do things without partnership. It requires some things on our part. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you about how we can make glory moves in the earth and return to the place where the preeminence of God is at the forefront of our hearts and our minds and our thoughts. And so that when people encounter us, they see less of us. And they see more of him. Do I, do I have anybody in the house that senses God wants to do something different? He wants to do more. Anybody tired of the mundane, mediocre, everyday, one of the meal relationship with God that, that is powerless? Yeah. How many people want more? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. See, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes count of the hands. He, he sees and he acknowledges the raised hands. And you, you can't say you don't want more if you don't really, really want to pay the price to get more. God says, I want to do a new thing. In the midst of chaos and racism, even today, our, our wonderful president, Trump, <laughs> had the nerve to interfere himself in South African affairs. If you think it's bad talking about other countries, you have no idea what it's like to live in the country with it. <laughs> but in the midst of racism and a divided country, in the middle of poverty and homelessness being on the rise, our God is saying, I am the answer. Amen. Amen. But I need my church to be in a position mm -hmm. to allow my glory to rest yes. and to reign. Amen. Luke, well, actually, John, actually, chapter 5. There's a story there. And the Bible says that God would come and he would trouble the water. And when he troubled the water, whoever stepped in, in that moment, would be able to find healing for their body. Whatever malady they had, whatever issue of sickness they had. The Bible says, if you would step into the water, then you would be healed. I, I believe this move of God would be much like that. Mm. Amen. Amen. That those who are prepared to step, mm. when he says step, I believe yeah. that he'll use you Amen. in a way like you've never been used before. Yes. Amen. God is beginning to trouble the water. Uh, you know he's, he's stirring up something when, when you begin to get agitated on a regular basis in your spirit. Mm. When, when evil raises its head and, and it seems like there's no answer in the moment and something inside of you says, no, this, this can't be. You know God is about to shift some things in the atmosphere. Mm. As I pray in this church, God said, I'm about to do something really powerful here. Amen. Amen. Can you feel it? Yeah. Yes. This week, can you sense it? Amen. Yes. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19 says this. See, I am doing a new thing, says the Lord. Now it springs up. Do, do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and I'm creating streams in the wasteland and in the desert. God says, I want to do a new thing. Amen. I want to do a new thing. I believe this, this wave, this ushering in of his glory is going to start with a new level of discipleship. Uh, I got the same no amen at my church. The level of discipleship that, that God is calling for is such that we're not just believers. But we're carriers of the glory. Amen. Amen. Not, just, not just people who stand up and say, I profess to know Christ. But, but out of your mouth flows the oracles of God. Amen. The truth of God. The power of God. God says, I want to raise up disciples. People that are disciplined in my word. Amen. People whose level of obedience is such that when I say move, they move. Amen. And when I say stay, they stay. Glory is the manifested presence of God. It's weighty. It's, it's heavy. When the glory of God shows up, sin 
It says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Said another way, by bearing much fruit, proving that you're his disciple, the manifested presence of God will be seen and experienced. The way that we glorify God is by, by bearing fruit Amen. that testifies of our connection to him. Right. Yes, yes. The problem is you can't bear fruit if you're not connected to the vine. Amen, uh, amen. Yeah. Uh, all around here in my hotel room, they gave us a basket of food. And in the room in the back, there's, there's baskets of fruit in and all of that fruit is real and authentic, but, but in my aunt's house when I was growing up, she had a, a basket on the table and it had plastic apples and oranges. <laughs> Anybody ever seen that? Uh -huh. And they looked so real. And they looked so authentic. The one day when I was a child and I went to my aunt's house, I saw them on the table and I, I naturally gravitated and picked up one and she said, no, 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 that's not real. She said, you'll break your tooth trying to bite that. So many Christians have plastic fruit. The world is biting in and, and they're being hurt by the lack of authenticity and the lack of the truth being represented. It looks like fruit. It shines like fruits. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If, if you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So 
with me for three days. <laughs> Otherwise, they may not want me back. God is calling for us to be the church that he intended for us to be. His voice is critical to our staying connected. We've got to train our ear to hear his voice so that when he speaks, we're quick to do what he says. God is committed to what he says. The question is, are we committed to do what he says? God says, my word won't return to me void, but it will accomplish what I send it forth to do. If he sends out the word and he gets out there and it even partially accomplishes what he said for it to do, it cannot come back to him until it has completed its assignment. Amen. Did you catch that? God's word, if it, it, it partially does, it's almost like he gets to the door and he says, hold on a second. I didn't do what God said to do, and so I'm going to have to finish the work that I was sent to do. Amen. Because he can't come back to God incomplete. No. But us, God speaks in. We have to do it. We have to get to a point where we train not only our ear here,
Amen. He says, I can't put new wine into old wine pieces. He said, what will happen is there will be corruption of the new. And in fact, it will burst things wide open if you don't allow the old to be done away with. Uh, see, when, when, when God does a new thing and, and you still have uh, those that are not on board with what God wants to do in this season, what will begin to happen is there will be conversations where, where people will start to infiltrate the ones that have the clear vision. And they'll try to pull them back to yesterday. And then you'll have confusion because two visions is division. So God says in this season, we have to completely do away with the old and be open to the new that he wants to do in this house. That means new people and new positions. It may mean a new way of doing things. It may be a new way of doing your service. He says, but allow me to be God. Allow me to be fresh. Yes. Don't box me in, says God. How else might we be qualified to be the carriers of his glory in this season? Well, we have to grow up. Yeah. Pastor talked about identifying yourself. Are you irritable? Are you ignorant? Are you innocent? Babies. We have to be able to identify where we are and then grow from there.
You say, well, I, I'm a rebel. I'm a little, I'm a little rebel, you know, rose and rebel. I, I stir stuff up. He said, yeah, and so did Peter. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Jesus was in the garden, and, and Peter took the sword off and cut old boy's ear off before God could even say anything. And yet when you read your Bible, chapters have been written by him. God says, you don't have to make excuses. I've made you exactly the way I intended to make you. And I've called you with all of your flaws, all of your insecurities, all of your junk, all of your skeletons, all of your foolishness, all of your past, your ugly resume, all of the things that you think are problematic. And God says, I still want to use you to usher in my glory in this season. But you've got to pay the price of preparation. God says, in order to be prepared as a body, you've got to walk in unity. Amen. We've got to walk in unity. Amen. Ephesians 5 talks about submitting one to another in the fear of God. You've got to, you've got to give your leadership respect. You've got to give them the honor. Not, not blind to following. Are you listening? But honest and reverential submission where each part adds to the body. There can only be one head on a body. So be careful of being drawn into divisive conversations. Oh, okay, let me say it this way. Well, I don't think things ought to go like that. If I were running things, This is the part that gets me in trouble, because the answer to that is if God wanted you to run it. <laughs> All the pastors know exactly what I'm talking about. God says we have to submit one to another, but there's also leadership that we're called to submit to. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Uh, what, if, what if in, in the choir over here, they sing so beautifully, what if, what if one of them just decided one day, I, I'm ready to leave? <laughs> and they just started singing. What's the worship leader saying? The, the gentleman. The turtle? Yeah. If he, if, he, if, he, if, he, if he was directing, but somebody decided, I'm not submitting to that. I got a song. <laughs> and I feel like singing it right now. We would have pure chaos instead of the glorious sound that ministers to everybody here. We have to submit one to another. If a part is for the altos to have the harmony, then the sopranos got to move out the way and let the harmony from Are you with me? We have to follow the leadership direction, the vision that's been passed, amen? And then we got to begin to watch for signs for God moving. You got to watch. You got to keep your eyes open. And even though it doesn't look like sometimes God is stirring something up, there was a servant in 2 Kings chapter 6 where Elijah, his servant, he asked him to go do something, and he, and he came back, and he said, we're surrounded by the enemy, and there looks like there's no way out. And he told him to go back, just check, just check, and look again. He says, I promise you, there's more here than meets the eye. Can I tell you there's more here than meets the eye? Hey. That there's more that God is doing in the lives of his people than you can actually see on the surface. And so God says, you got to keep a watchful eye on me. you got to hold your ears still. Because I may not come in the earthquake, and I may not come in the whirlwind, but I may just come in a still, small voice. So keep your ear attentive to my voice. When he comes, he's going to ignite our souls and refresh your vision and restore your hope and revive your heart. Just so you know that what he's doing sometimes almost seems bigger than your ability to handle. Amen. In fact, Pastor uh, who preached, my brother here, he was talking about how faith is active.
motivated when we run out of ourselves and our own abilities. And so if what God has called you to do seems bigger than you're able to handle, Pastor, more than likely is Him. Because right when you get to the end of your talent and your ability is when God says, oh, you, you're, you, you're, you're done? Now it's time for me to move on. Now, now, now it's a God content. Amen? Uh, at 11.59.59, when the bill is due and you still don't have the money, God says, now, now it's time for me to show up. When the doctors say there's nothing else I can do, that's when it's time for God to show up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can I tell you that the timing of the move of God may not fit your agenda? I don't know about how he works here, but in the States, he always seems to be late, Pastor. <laughs> I won't just pour out my spirits on the bishops. I won't just pour out my spirit on the apostles. 
I won't just pour out my spirit on the worship leaders. He says, I will pour out my flesh on sons and daughters. The, the, the handmaids, the females, they will prophesy. The men will prophesy. And together there will be an ushering in of the glory of God so strong and so powerful that the world would not be able to stand. Uh, earlier we read that he will not share his glory. And I will close with this. If he won't share his glory, then how in the world can we be glory carriers? You read it with me, did you not? That he won't share his glory? And yet he's calling us to carry the glory. Well, Jesus said, glorify your son. As I've glorified you, God, glorify your son. And as you glorify me, I'm glorifying them. He says, you in me, I in them. The same glory that I had when I was in heaven, that's the glory that he's talking about. That's the weightiness of his presence that he's talking about. That he put aside to some degree so that he could be a man and walk this earth. He says, God, glorify me again the same way I was glorified in heaven. And then I want to glorify them. And as I glorify them, they will be glory carriers in the earth so that when people encounter them, they will encounter the glory as they decrease the glory that's in Christ Jesus will now be in them because of the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of us. Amen. So God says, again, in me, in me, says God, in me, you have to stay. And you've got to stay connected. If you are interested in God doing a new thing in your life, stand to your feet. Don't stand if you're not serious. If you're interested in God doing a new thing, stand to your feet.